to have uh, such amount of uh, high-level scientists from all over and also speaking on very strategic topics that is uh, energy, sustainability and the durability. Okay, so today I'd like to talk about <coughs> artificial intelligence, which for me I see it as maybe the future of batteries. Uh, for the presentation from uh, Kautar before, she gave us an overview about uh, what's going on in the research, R&D. And uh, I'm uh, now uh, shifting from uh, science, scientific uh, researcher to entrepreneur, and uh, I'm becoming more and more uh, pragmatic. So, to me, the statement I would like to say is that in the horizon of the next 30 years, I don't see any chemistry that will replace lithium-ion batteries. Sorry. I mean, there are le lots of things interesting. Lithium oxygen, lithium sulfur, sodium, etc. That's all interesting. But there is this uh, figure of merit where you have energy density, power density, long life, uh, etc., etc. And uh, to have all this, you know, uh, <coughs> a figure of merit that uh, gives better performance than lithium ion battery, I really don't see it. It's very difficult because you can increase one part but at the expense of another, like uh, life and uh, safety and so on. So anyway, I think today, uh, since uh, 1991, when the lithium ion battery was introduced by Sony in Japan, the energy density was less than 100 watt hour per kg kilo and uh, 90 and then uh, the energy density has been increasing almost linearly since um, uh, since two. Yeah, uh, now we are almost as a kind of plateau for the energy density around 260 270 maybe sometimes we hear 300 watt hour per kg, but uh, not at mass production, it's uh, still at R&D. So, now that we have this kind of plateau of 250 watt hour per kg, to me the best strategy is how can we use what we have today to the best. It means we have to increase the life, we have to increase safety, and also we have to maybe decrease the cost and so on, but uh, I think from the energy density standpoint of view, it will be very hard to uh, go beyond 300, although the Department of Energy in the US puts 500 watt hour per kg, but uh, who knows? Uh, it may be possible, but then we need really a big, big breakthrough in the uh, material science and so on to, to achieve this. Okay. So, lithium-ion batteries come in many different form factors, uh, cylindrical, prismatic, polymer, for different applications. So this is very well known. Uh, this one <coughs> is used for laptop computers. This one, the polymer one, is for cell phones. And this one, mostly for energy storage and for uh, electric cars. Although Tesla is using uh, cylindrical cells for electric cars as well. But anyway, the, this is the, the most important form factors of uh, lithium-ion batteries today. And the applications, uh, the main, I mean, the, the, the domain of applications is, in ex is increasing uh, year by year to extend to transportation uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, energy storage, like here, and for uh, marine, mass of marine, and also telecommunications, and so on, and so on. Uh, space application, drones, we just ask ourselves, how could we live 30 years ago without some ion batteries? Because they are expanding so much everywhere. And um, of course, what we are expecting is these kind of devices for cleaning the air in uh, big cities like uh, Casablanca and Marrakech and so on, uh, by, by introducing the hybrid electric cars and also electric cars. So the market is also is, uh, increasing almost exponentially. In 2018, there were almost 8 billion battery cells produced worldwide. And the paradox is that most of the R&D is done in the West, like US and Europe. The market is in China, in Asia. I mean, the production. So China now produces over 65% of 
of lithium ion batteries in the world. And they actually just take the ideas from Argonne National Labs and other labs in the world. Sometimes they pay royalties, but sometimes they don't pay royalties. And as a result, and plus the subsidies from the Chinese government, push the price to go very low, be, below $200 per kilowatt hours. If you ask me four years ago, could we go below 200 I said, no, it's impossible. But now it is possible because of China and uh, because of the, you know, the support of the government and so on. But I heard that next year, the Chinese government will uh, support less and that we expect maybe the price going up, uh, maybe in the next future, which may be good news, because um, when the price goes up, means that we are not compromising, especially in the safety. And safety is one of the big, big issues of the future of lithium ion batteries. <laughs> This is how the market is divided. So we have uh, uh, telecommunication, interrupted power sources, uh, energy storage systems, uh, electric bicycles, and uh, uh, electric cars, and so on. So it's increasing, as I said, that this uh, uh, market is uh, increasing by almost uh, <coughs> uh, 17 to 20 percent a year. It's uh, one of the most successful industrial history of the 20, 20th and 21st century. Okay, but still there are some issues, and this is where uh, I would like to uh, bit show you what we are doing. Safety, uh, charging time, driver range, and service life. Okay, and this, all these issues were also already mentioned by Kautar just before uh, my presentation, so I'm just showing you how we are uh, approaching these issues and how we are tackling them, trying to find solutions. So these kind of things we don't we don't want to see. And I can say to everybody that some of the batteries here can be also lithium ion phosphate. Okay? If you Google lithium ion phosphate fire and explosion, you will see many videos that are still so it's not because we are using lithium ion phosphate that batteries are safer. They're a little bit safer but not hundred percent safe. Okay? So we have to be careful about uh, some statements that uh, lithium ion phosphates are safe batteries. That's not true. Charging time, uh, of course we dream to have uh, 55 minutes, but uh, and in five minutes we can drive like uh, 390 kilometers. This is a dream, of course, but the uh, reality is this. That is actually we need uh, six hours. This is the ABB, which is the major uh, uh, charging station uh, provider in the world. And uh, depending on the chemistry, it's a, this is overnight, this is a two, four hours, but so the problem with this is that although some people, they announce charging in less than one hour, but it's not 100% charge. You are not putting 100% of the energy in one hour today using the conventional technologies like the CCCD and multi-step constant current charging technologies. So these are the ranges of driving that is existing now. You see here some cars. Uh, can go from almost 100 to almost 400 uh, miles and uh, Tesla with 100 kilowatt hour uh, provides the, 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 the 380 plus uh, miles but if you look at the conception how many miles you can afford per kilowatt hour you see that Tesla is the worst okay because the battery pack is so big so heavy that every mile you are need you need more and more energy to drive. So it's the, the problem is you have to find kind of compromise. And uh, I'm glad that actually Rolo uh, Zoe is one of the most uh, the best performing uh, system. And uh, uh, now uh, other companies like Nissan and so on they are increasing the amount of kilowatt hours maybe to go to close to 40, 45 uh, kilowatt hours, which I think is the uh, the good range of uh, energy stored and the, the, uh, in, the, in an electric car to give you a uh, long range. The other thing is the how long can we keep a battery, that's very important. And the amount of cycles that the battery can afford depends on the utilization. Of course, if you don't, you never utilize a battery, like the depth of discharge is zero percent, you have an infinite cycle time. Of course, but sorry, this is just a joke. But now you increase, you are using your battery deeper and deeper, up to 100%. And then, depending on the chemistry and so on, 
the uh, amount of cycles that you can do if you are charging the battery in less than two hours is about 500, but this, this number is increasing year by year. So, for instance, the Argonne National Lab, they have 1,000 cycles, but there have been more than 2,000, 3,000 cycles that has been, have been already uh, announced. But again, it's important actually to understand that the life of the battery, the amount of cycles, depends on how deep you are using the battery every time you charge it and discharge it. Typically, if you are driving your car from home to work, and you have a charging station at work, or you have a station, uh, charging overnight, charging uh, you know, a station at your home somewhere, you are not using 100% of the battery at the time. So you can actually afford to keep your car for more than 10 years. Okay, now uh, I'd like to show you how we address the, the, the issues that I just mentioned. So, this is actually the non-void intersection between material science, that is uh, sustaining the uh, detox and battery research, and the artificial intelligence. So, we are developing two types of chips, and these chips are actually to do one thing. The first chip is to do uh, the state of charge, state of health, and state of safety, and life. How can we extend the life of the battery? So the way how we are handling the battery, the way how we are charging it and so on, and the controlling the temperature is very important to determine the life and the safety. And the second chip here is actually to apply a fast charging protocol. Very important. So uh, today, as I said, if we use the conventional method like constant current, constant voltage, or the multi-step constant current method, if we charge, fully charge a battery in one hour, the, the, the risk of catching fire is very high. And I just received uh, two days ago an email from a major uh, Chinese uh, lithium-ion battery manufacturer. He said, Prof. Yazami, we agree with you, uh, charging in one hour is very dangerous today. And there is no technology enabling a safe way to charge batteries in less than one hour. And they will show you how we solve this problem. So of course, each, each of these uh, chips are, has the software and our know-how is coming actually from the protocols that we are developing, all the algorithms that we are developing. So my company is mostly an algorithm company. We are not in the silicon business, but mostly on the algorithm. So uh, our technology is based on thermodynamics. We measure entropy of batteries. Entropy is, uh, thermodynamics is a universal you know, uh, knowledge in physics and chemistry and, uh, and the universe it goes from the uh, nucleus, from the quarks to the whole universe and there are principles of thermodynamics, uh, the first and second and third principles of thermodynamics and so far nobody has proven that these principles are wrong. So we trust they are good and basically we are measuring the entropy of batteries and from the entropy and enthalpy of batteries we are learning a lot. I'm just making a joke that if batteries have to communicate with human beings, they will use entropy as the language. So we have to learn language of entropy so we can communicate with batteries. So basic equation, very simple. So we have the uh, free energy, which uh, has two terms. One is the enthalpy and the entropy. And also the good thing about uh, electrochemistry is that the free energy is related to the uh, open circuit voltage here, E0. So if we derive the uh, open circuit voltage versus temperature, we have the entropy, very simple. If I measure temperature within 0 0.1 Kelvin and voltage with 0 0.1 millivolt, I'm able to measure the entropy at any time. Because the time I have my cell phone in my hand and put it on the table or put it in my, my pocket, the temperature has changed by a few degrees or even the tenth of degrees. So if I measure temperature within 0 0.1 Kelvin, I can measure entropy at any time. So it's very simple, very fundamental, and uh, the, this uh, linearity, I mean the voltage versus temperature is almost linear, always linear, as I will show you in some examples. And then from the, this equation you have the enthalpy here as a function of the open circuit voltage and the uh,